If you work in the uh, consumer packaged goods industry, then you already know that requirements for handling your supply chain have gotten a lot tighter. Uh, most of this is due to regulations, uh, notably the Food Safety Modernization Act. But when you couple that with the increasing globalization of the supply chain, we're talking more and more suppliers in far-flung corners of the world, then you have kind of a double whammy, right? You've got lots of suppliers and the legal requirements that you have uh, to handle suppliers have gotten tighter and, and because they want to know exactly where your ingredients are coming from. So here to discuss that issue and more is Brandon Henning, head of the Consumer Goods Industry Vertical for Sparta Systems. Hi, Brandon. Hey, how are you today? Pretty good. How are you? Great. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you say in uh, your article that consumer packaged goods manufacturers are under more pressure now than ever before. Can you elaborate on that just a bit? Sure. Well, I think there's a couple factors that are adding to the challenge for consumer packaged goods fat, um, manufacturers. As you indicated, for starters, we've got new regulation or proposed new regulation with the FSMA coming down the road that's certainly going to make um, you know, compliance much tighter and you know, much more challenging for food manufacturers and consumer manufacturers, especially as it relates to the way that they have to manage their suppliers. So, you know, the regulations are now driving that you actually have to audit and show records of the manu auditing the supplier sites where you're actually getting your ingredient from, not just the supplier itself. Now they're putting or proposing regulations around um, auditing your importers as well. So there's a lot more regulation that's coming. But even more than that, it's the extension of your supply chain and globalization, right? So companies are really starting to look at emerging markets at, for growth. As we all know, you know, North America, Western Europe isn't necessarily where the growth is for C CPG companies. So they're moving into emerging markets, and that adds a ton of complexity. It adds complexity from the perspective of you have new manufacturing facilities that you now have to make sure are under quality control. You're dealing with a whole new set of suppliers that you've probably never dealt with before in the past. You've got to start to be able to manage those suppliers because they may also be bringing ingredients and materials back into your traditional manufacturing sites, as well as the fact that beyond globalization, as you, or beyond kind of moving into these markets from a traditional manufacturing perspective, you also have a lot of new product introduction, right? So you're expanding your markets, you're introducing a bunch of new products to serve those markets because what they want may be different than what you're traditionally used to manufacturing. And at the same time, mergers and acquisitions are still very heavy, and all of that is adding a lot of complexity to your supply chain and certainly driving a lot of new relationships with suppliers that you now have to manage much differently than you did in the past due to the regulations coming down the road. So, Brandon, you're, you're, you're of course with Sparta Systems, and, and, and Sparta offers offers some support in this, this realm. So, uh, tell us why why can or can an ERP system help address the issues that you're, you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, I mean, m most companies already have an yeah, ERP, yeah, yeah. so so why why can't that function as as the as the answer to that? Right, and that's a great question, and it's one we get quite often. In fact, I was just talking to some um, food and beverage manufacturers yesterday, and they're asking the same thing. And the challenge that we have with ERP right now is if you think about ERP, ERP was really designed to pay, right? So at the crux of what ERP was implemented to do, it was implemented to manage your financials, and it was implemented to help you pay. The challenge is most of the suppliers that you get your material from, what you actually have to know from a regulation perspective now is what the supplier site actually is, where the materials or ingredients actually come from, and that's really never who you pay. Generally, when you pay, you are either paying a broker. So, for example, if you're dealing with, you know, high quality, high consumable materials like sugar or flour or something like that, generally you're purchasing that from a broker. Or, best case, your ERP knows who the parent company is of your suppliers. But it's very rare that the ERP actually goes down to the level of telling you what supplier site is actually providing you what ingredients and to what manufacturing sites those ingredients are approved to be shipped to from that supplier site. The challenge is that's really the level of detail you, we're going to need to get to if the FSMA regulations are passed as proposed. Okay. All right. Now, you, in, your, in your article, you mentioned that there's some value in software being able, if I understood this right, in, in, in being able to do this tracking and so forth in real time. And I, I guess I'm not 
I guess my personally, I'm not seeing the, the, what the real value of the real time feedback is. I mean, basically, you want to know, hey, where are my, where are my ingredients come from? I mean, does it matter how quickly we're getting this information? So the reason we want to get the information, and it's, you know, real time is your perspective of how you, how fast you need it. But the reason you want to get the information sooner than later is think about all the impacts that suppliers can have on your ability to manufacture. As we, and we'll talk a lot more about this in our um, some of the webinars that we're going to be doing. But there's some studies out that say basically 52% of all of the quality incidents that you currently are having are related to something that's either caused by your ingredient suppliers or caused by your contract manufacturers or co-packers. So to be able to manage that in real time has a big impact on your ability to manage your cost of quality, your manage your cost of cost of goods sold. So as an example, if you can work more tightly with your suppliers and understand where the ingredients are really coming from and be able to collaborate across a system where a supplier can tell you in real time, hey, we have a problem with this ingredient. We just realized it. It's on the way to plant one. Make sure you quarantine it before you put it into your operation. That's going to save you a ton of money because traditionally what happens today is the supplier figures that out. They send you an email. Someone doesn't read the email for a couple of days. You've consumed that material, and now that material is either somewhere in a distribution center waiting to be shipped, worst case it got out to your customer. But the general fact of the matter is the longer it takes you to realize that you're having incidents, especially incidents due to your suppliers, and the further out that material gets into your value chain, you know, out into manufacturing, into your DCs, out to customers or consumers, the more expensive that incident is going to cost you. So the ability to manage that relationship in real time has a big impact on your cost of goods sold, your cost of quality, and your overall ability to operate efficiently. Okay, and uh, we're going to be talking about those topics and a lot more in a webinar that's going to be coming up, uh, Brandon and I. Uh, the webinar is going to be the positive impact managing supplier quality has on meeting your regulatory and operational goals. That's going to be Tuesday. June 30th, that's next week, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, there's a link down there that we can, um, yep. in, uh, in, you can click on. In, in Brandon's article, there's a link out to the registration page, so make sure you check that out and register for that webinar yep. today. And Brandon Henning, uh, Director of Consumer Goods with Sparta Systems, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Okay, see you next week. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, we'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks. Good. <laughs> Great. Good <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, good stuff there, and and uh, that's a good webinar. So, certainly, if you're in the food chain, food uh, food supply, uh, or or you're a food manufacturer, um, definitely check the one out. Some good information. Again, that's uh, that's going to be the positive impact managing supplier quality has on. I can't read that, Dirk. Can you? Uh, operational oh, goals. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, much, much better. Okay. The eyes regulatory are old. and operational goals. Okay. <laughs> has on meeting your regulatory and operational goals. There it is right there. That's We're not gonna getting be, old. That's going to be on, on Tuesday, the, the 30th of June, next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Again, see. you can again you can check out Brandon's articles right below the pay, player page right down there. There's a link in there where you can go out and register for that webinar.